Welcome to Fountain of Life Ministry, where lives are being changed. Thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast. I believe the Lord is going to speak to you, to you this afternoon, tonight, or whenever you are viewing this program. And I believe your life can be changed if you put your ears on, amen, and take some notes and study them, follow them. I believe you will see God change your life this year. Amen? amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really, truly believe that. Hallelujah. I want you to turn your Bibles, and I do believe God has something for us to say for us tonight. If you would turn your Bibles into, find the book of Galatians, hallelujah, and uh, we're going to go back over there and look at verse 2 again, and we're just going to find some things out about our Lord and Savior, amen, hallelujah, we're going to find some things out. About our Lord and say, how, how many of you know that he was our role model? He was our role model for pleasing God. Hallelujah. Did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2, are you there? Let's look at verse 20 again. It says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he's telling you right now, even though this life he's living, he's living it in the flesh, but it's not him living it. He's living it in Christ. Amen. His faith is in the Son of God. That's how he's able to live this life. Because now he had his own faith at one time. All right. But now he, the faith that he's living off of and living from now is the faith of the Son of God. Now I want you to follow me. I believe the Lord's going to talk to us. Let's read it one more time. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, what we need to know and want to know, which is essential to us, is uh, how did he live it? How did he live it? Because Paul says, the life I live now, it is of the faith of the Son of God. So how did the Son of God live his life? Amen? Because if it was so good to someone like Paul being converted will follow Christ's life, his faith, how did he live it? Why was it that inspired Paul? Amen? Why did he live it? Hallelujah. So how did, how did Jesus live that life? How why was Paul inspired? He says that faith, I like that scripture. He says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So how did the Son of God live his life? He lived it by faith, right? He sure did. So let me show you what, he, what the scripture said he did. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because Paul is saying, that's the faith. That's the kind of faith I live now. Uh, so we want to know, you know, <clears throat> we want to know. So how did, how did Jesus live it? John chapter 12. Are you there? Look at verse 49. This is Jesus talking. He says, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me. Now, listen to this. He gave me a commandment. What I should what? Say. Come on. And what I should speak. So how, how, what kind of life did Jesus live? What is it that constituted the faith that Paul lived? Look what it says, verse 50. And I know that his commandment is what? Life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. 
So right here, we see Paul right now, uh, Jesus right now, being obedient to the Father, saying what the Father said, speaking what the Father spoke. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's go to John chapter 5. Let's look at something else. John chapter 5. We're trying to see what kind of faith did Jesus have. How was Jesus living his life? Hallelujah. Because Jesus had to get his faith from somewhere. Amen. How many of you know that when Christ come down here, he came in the flesh like you and I? How many of you know he didn't have any crutches to lean on? Did you know that? A lot of people think he endured and he made it because he was the son of God. He was the son of God. He was a high priest. But he wasn't operating in those offices at all. He came in the natural flesh like me and you. This is why you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells in Hebrews 2.14 that he took on flesh and blood like you and I. It behooved him to take on the flesh and blood. He took not on the, the nature of angels. Big, tall, Superman, Hercules. No, regular old flesh like me and you. But he had a code of faith that he lived by. Are you with me? John 5, are you there? I want you all to get it because it really means a lot. It will mean a lot to you. John chapter 5, we start looking at verse 15. It says, the man departed and told let me show them right now. It is John, okay. John chapter 5, all right, uh, verse 15. It says, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, answered them, my father worked hitherto until now, and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him equal with God. Verse 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them. Now listen, here's how he lived. Verse 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he see the Father do, for what things soever he do it, these also do it, the Son, likewise. For the Father loved the Son and showed him all things that himself do it, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. So in these few verses, we're seeing what kind of faith it is that Jesus had, that Paul Father. He spoke what God spoke. He said what God said. And he did what God do, what God told him to do. This is what you and I got to do. Jesus followed the word of God. All right? Am I right? Yes. And this is what you and I do. We follow the word of God. And Jesus didn't question God. He says, I do what I hear him tell me to do. I say what he tell me to say. I keep the commandment he gave me. That was, that was, his, that was him operating in faith. So Paul comes along and says, my faith now is in the faith of the son of God. So if that's true, we need to know how the Son of God lived. He was obedient to the Father. His confession lined up with the confession of the Father. He said what the Father said, and he did what the Father did. So Paul says, my faith now is in him. So we're talking about... we're. we're on the, still on the subject title, living the faith life. Living the faith life. 
And I'm going to tell you again and tell you again and tell you again until I feel like the Lord don't want me to say it anymore. If I had not been, if I had not been listening to the word, if I hadn't had the word of God on the inside of me, if I had not been familiar with the word, if I had not had some experience with the word or know what the word meant, my wife would have had to fight that battle by herself. She would have to fight it by herself. But I knew how to, I knew how to jump in there and take control. Amen. I knew how to get in there and, and, and uh, put that enemy at rest. I knew how to intervene right then. I knew to attack where it came from. I knew what the devil was going to do. I didn't panic, and I didn't holler and cry to God. Yeah, I call on God, call on Jesus too. Amen. Call on the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I wasn't tore up to pieces, not knowing what to do. Huh? You know why? Because I've been living that faith life. I've been living the faith life. And so the word is already in me. Amen. It's already in me. And see, and this is where God want you to get. This is where God want all of us to be. Get to that point. Amen. Where right away you recognize who is at work. You got to know who is at work. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then you got to believe in the authority that has been delegated to you. Huh? You got to believe in it. You got to believe in that authority that's been delegated to you. I'm telling you, folks, it's important. Do, do you know the devil is not a respectable person? He don't care what side of the track you're from. What color your skin, your origin, or whatever. He don't like you. He don't like you. Amen. And his objective is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. In any way, by any means that he can get it done, he will. But I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. I thank God for Luke 10, 19. Hmm? Hmm? I saw him fall like lightning. But behold, I give him to you power and authority over the enemy. You got to believe that you have that. You got to believe that you have that. You better believe it. You got to believe that. You got to believe that. Because if you keep living, he will visit you. And I'm not speaking negative. But if you keep living... He will come. Amen. And especially if you're trying to do the Lord's work. You are target. And don't let him catch you witness to nobody. Now that is one thing he doesn't like. I've learned over the years. He don't want you witness to nobody telling anyone how good God is. Amen. He come to shut your mouth up. But he doesn't have any power or authority over you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. He said what the father told him to say. Didn't he do it? He spoke the things the father told him to speak. Didn't he do it? Hallelujah. Now see, Paul didn't have that relationship with, with God like Jesus did. So he says, I'm going to follow his faith. All right. Now, Paul did have, later on, Paul had somewhat of a relationship with Jesus, especially on the road to Damascus. Amen. He found out the true power and the real power of God. And that relationship must have lasted for a while because he was inspired to, to write this. Turn your Bible, if you would, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Get over here and shut up your mouth. Quit trying to turn. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So I believe the relationship grew. It had to grow. Because he wrote, he wrote two-thirds of the new covenant book. 
two-thirds. And a matter of fact, I know the relationship had to grow because, listen, he is the man that started the new covenant, the man that God used to write two-thirds of the new covenant. So that relationship grew, and it grew to a point that he was inspired to say this. First Corinthians chapter, uh, First Corinthians chapter uh, one. Is that what I said? No, chapter eleven. I said eleven. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's get over there right quick. I want you to look at the very first verse. Look what it says. Be ye who of me, even what as I am of Christ. So that relationship built, didn't he? Huh? Yes, it, did. it build. It build. Hallelujah. Now you're talking about a man of faith. Paul was it. You ought to hear some of the talk that he talked. Well, we, we talked about it when, when they came to, when, when, the, when Agabus, the prophet, said to him, he says, the man that owns that belt, he says, uh, he's going to bind you handcuff you if I can just paraphrase it and uh, and, and uh, he says in every city he, he got that witness and they came to him crying sad he says uh, what do you mean being crying and what do you mean being sad he said not only am I willing to be bound <laughs> he said but I'm willing to die right. now I believe the man lived that faith life he talked more about faith than any other apostles in the, in the Bible. Amen? Living that faith life. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's like, it's like money in the bank. Of course, it's better than money in the bank, but I'm just hoping you can you know, understand that analogy. You know, if your air conditioning unit run out right now and it's got 20, and it's going to cost $20,000 and you've got to have one or your heat system, whatever, it's a good feeling knowing that you can write a check and get one instead of going to the bank and borrow the money to get it. Is that right? So it's a, it's a good feeling to knowing that greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. Living that faith life. Living the faith life. Living the faith life. Are you with me so far? Praise God. Let's look at... Uh, and let's look at the John. Uh, you still in John? And let's just go back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but not really. I want you to go back to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Listen what, listen what my Savior said. Is he your Savior too? Okay, then I say listen what our Savior said. Listen what our Savior said. I love this. Hmm. Praise God. This is living the faith life. Hallelujah. John chapter 5, look at verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. I seek the will of the Father. Is that right? Who sent me? That's living the faith life. I say that's living the faith life. I'm see, that's what you and I are to live. Seek the will of the Father every day. That's living the faith life. You know, you may not, may not, it may be nothing that's really happening right now. But you know, sometimes it's good. Lord, what would you have me to do today? Right. Yeah. Uh, Lord, lead me in the yeah. path of someone that needs to be encouraged today. Right. Every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, what, what good can I do in your name? Yeah. That's living the faith life. And see, we got to be conscious of this. See, you're not just any person walking around. You have an anointing on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Whether well, you know that not, that's a glow on you. Yes. That's an anointing on you. Mm-hmm. You're not just getting up, going to bed, getting up, going to bed. No, you are ambassadors. Mm-hmm. It's what you are. And when we walk out the house, we always ought to be conscious of who can I bless? Yes. Who can I share a good word with? 
Amen. Because that's who we are. That's what we do. Amen. Do you know how Jesus, do you know Christ never saved nobody? Do you know Jesus Christ never got nobody saved? He never got anybody. He died for everyone to be saved, but he never got them saved. We are the one who gets them saved. We let them know that the provision has been made. Now, his blood did save him, but I'm saying he didn't get anybody saved particularly. He healed a lot of folks, delivered a lot of folks, but he couldn't, but couldn't nobody get saved until after he died and resurrected. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with him? I'm excited. So we live, the faith, we live that faith life by seeking the will of God. And see, this is a, this is living the faith life. This is a perpetual thing. It's not on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. It has to be a part of the life that we live. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, you know, you could get up in the morning and, and, and go to Walmart or go to Bojangles, you know. And, so, and, somebody could, and somebody could do something to you that could really make you get out of character. Because your flesh ain't forgot how to cut up. Right. Amen. Right. <laughs> but the scripture says the love of God that contain, that restrains me. Right. But but if you're not living that life and having that word in you, you 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 may just result back to the the old nature, the old man, which is called the flesh, and put that person in that place. But your light won't be shining too bright if you do something like that. Amen. So we got to live that faith life. Now, I'll be honest with you. My wife and I out sometimes. And cashiers start acting ugly and whatever. You know, I just make it easy on myself. I walk away. And I let my wife. <laughs> I let my wife. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm working on a whole lot of things. Amen. But when you just start acting like a, a idiot, a totally idiot, uh, I like I said, I'm working on it. I got to be honest with you. I I don't have everything down pat, you know, and I don't think anyone in here does. Amen. Hallelujah. But look, I want to show you something else, uh, uh, which 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 uh, which it, it it says that. Jesus lived that faith life. And Paul followed that faith life of Christ. I want you, you still in John? Go to John chapter 8. You know, if you want to know anything about Jesus, you can hang around in the Gospels. And especially John, Matthew, Martin, Luke, you know, you can, you can hang around in there and, and God will tell you all you need to know. John, 20, uh, John chapter 8, are you there? Now look what Jesus said. This is living the faith life. John chapter 8, let's look at verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Did I say it? No, I'm sorry. Verse 26, I'm sorry. It says, I have many things to say to you. I have many things to say to you. And to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Here he is again. It's not about him. It's about the one that sent him. Look what it says now. They understood not that he spake to them. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, come on, I speak these things. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone. 
come on, finish that other, that last part. For I do always the things that please him. I always do the things to please my father. Do you think we can do it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can always do things to please the father. Now, you know, you got to be living a faith life. For the last three weeks, I've been trying to do everything that I thought would please my wife. But as soon as she get good and healed back on her feet. <laughs> this girl has been living. She has been li She's getting out of me stuff she's been wanting to get for 20 years. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I've done it all with joy. I really have. And, and I asked her one time, sweetheart, do you get tired of me telling you I love you? She says, no. Do you get tired of me asking you, what can I do for you? She says, no. <laughs> because I tell you 10, 15 times a day, you know, when the devil mess with your wife or your husband, he's messing with you. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. She's bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. You heard her, you heard me. Amen. Hallelujah. But listen to what Jesus said. This tells me he aimed to please the Father. He didn't say that I do most of the things that please him. He said, I always. I do always those things that please him. Now, if you and I would try to do that, I promise you, you'll be right into living that faith life. See, when I say living the faith life, all I am really saying is this right here. Being obedient to the teaching and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's the faith life. I'm not talking about the faith where you're going to believe God for something. I believe I receive in the name of Jesus, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about living a lifestyle. Amen. Living a lifestyle. Knowing that any time, knowing any time, you know, that Christ could come. Mm -hmm. Amen. Of course, we know there's a lot of prophecies and things has to happen before he come. But we ought to be living our life as if we know he coming on the 18th of next month. Huh? That's the, that's what God is. And God want us to get there. See, I know my father. I know because I hear him in my spirit. I know that's where he want us to be. He want us to be there. Hallelujah. I know he want us to be there. Woo. You know, I found out, and I know you know too, but it gives him great pleasure and great joy to see your joy fulfilled. Can you imagine somebody being happy about you being successful? I mean, just being, and then they contribute to your success. But that's what our Father wants for us. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I do it, that the Father may be glorified. And then another scripture, he said that your joy may be fulfilled. So he wants us, listen. People ought to quit knocking the prosperity message. He died for it. He died for it. Above all things, I wish that you what? Prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So that's three, that, that's three uh, different uh, areas there that he want us to. I think I went out. Did I come back in? Open up the door. I come on in. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I, I'm loving this teaching because, see, you know, I know a lot of stuff is true, but there's a lot of time we need to be reminded. Amen. We need to be reminded of some stuff. Brings joy all over. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it one more time. Man, he that sent me, verse 29, he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. 
my graces. Is that good? Living the faith life is obeying the word of God. That's living the old faith. That's living the faith life. Let's go to James chapter 1. I got some stuff to get to. And what's that guy named that sang that Burke, that bandit song? Got a long ways to go in a short time to get there. I don't know his name, but I did like that song. <laughs> that was the bandit, Burt Reynolds. I look, see, it's all right to watch TV. You watch that good, clean stuff. Amen. Woo! James chapter 1. What's the title of our message? Living the faith life. Living the faith life. Hallelujah. James chapter 1, are you there? Let's look at verse 22. It says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The devil is not even deceiving you. When you hear the word, and you don't do the word, you don't obey the word, you can't even blame that on the devil. Huh? Julie, I got a word for you. He that keeps his tongue keeps his soul, keeps his life. Hallelujah. I gave that to her because of what she said in her testimony. But I want to tell you that's for everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And I think that's in Proverbs. Are we ready to keep on going? Jesus, James says what? I'm going to read it again because it just got too good to me. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's likened to a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For, for he beholding himself and go his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. That's the man that hear and don't do it. Hmm? You know, I used to love the print when I was younger. You know, print? I believe that's where my oldest boy got it from. He loved the print, right? You stare in the mirror. And some of the, you know, you print, you get the, every strangest, right? And, and you, you walk away from the mirror. And, and, uh, and about 10 minutes ago, about 10 minutes you got to leave the house, you go back in there and check it again. Forget about what man he was. Forget about what it looks like. So he said this right here, but verse 25 again, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and do what? Continue. Therein he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. See, your blessings, your breakthroughs is all, hallelujah, thank you, Father, it's all based on you being obedient to the word. Did you get that part? Did you really? It's the man that continue, continue. It's the man that will continue. That's, and see, and you got some help to help you continue. You got the Holy Spirit. You definitely got to call on him. And we showed you last Wednesday night, or was it Sunday, this past Sunday? It was Sunday. I told you Sunday. We showed you Sunday how to call on the Holy Spirit because that's a proper way you call on him. Amen? That's a proper way you call on him. Thank you, Father. Woo! And he says what in verse 25 again? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue. Therein, he being not a forget for hearing, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Hallelujah. So if we live that faith life, we'll be blessed in our deeds. We will be blessed in our deeds. Hallelujah. We'll be blessed in our deeds. You know, I know as a pastor, it's not always easy uh, to hear the word, be a doer of the word, 
and then you confront it by someone or the enemy, mostly people. Uh, you know, the Bible says our warfare is not flesh and blood, all right, but it's principalities and palaces. But here's the key thing. The devil used people to do it. Amen? And I know sometimes it's tough to walk in love. Amen? You can be honest with me. It's honest. It's tough to walk in love. Sometimes it gets tough. It's tough to forgive. But the way you do it, you go ahead and do it right then. Amen? Don't, don't wall in it. Don't wall it in it at all. Now, listen. Now, I want to show you something here that will help us walk in love. See, because we want to live that faith life. See, you can't live a faith life and, and hate me. You can't live a faith life and be upset with me or stay upset with me. You can't live a faith life and have a grudge against me. You know, I've had people to leave this church not because of something I've done to them, but because of something I said in my deliverance, in my, in my ministry. Those are immature babies. Hmm? Or don't have the Spirit of God in them at all. Might not even be saved. Amen? Because Jesus told us, when you pray, when you pray for anything, when you pray, you make sure you forgive. Because if you don't forgive, he said, I'm, I won't even hear your prayer. He said, I won't even hear your prayer. That's Mark eleven twenty six. 26. I, I, I look, talk to the hand. I want to hear what you got to say. I die for that man just like I die for you. Amen. We got to live that faith life, see? That's living the faith life. Why you call it a faith life? Because it's the word of God. And faith is what? The word of God. Faith is obeying, acting on the word of God. That's what faith is. Are you with me? Go back to Galatians if you would. We're talking about living the faith life, see? And a lot of times I wonder, what, what good things not happening to me? What kind of life are you living? What kind of blessings ain't coming in my, life, my way? What kind of life are you living? Are you still mad at somebody done you wrong 20 years ago? Have you said in your heart, I'll never forgive him? Hmm? Hallelujah. You know, I've had some people to do me wrong since I've been a pastor. People I have poured my life into. I mean, I have. They walk right away without an explanation. Just walk away. Do I forgive them? Absolutely. Yes, I do. As my wife used to say, no matter what you give them or put into it, you gave it from your heart. You gave it from your heart, not, not because you wanted a return on it. Amen. And plus, that deed has not gone unnoticed by God. That seed has not gone unnoticed. So you haven't lost anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a good word. Living that faith life. Praise God. And again, to make it plain and simple, living the faith life is being obedient to the word of God. That's how you live the faith life. Live. Jesus says, whatever you want done unto you, do unto others. Is that right? But we're going to do unto them because that is a new commandment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, man. Help me, Jesus. Galatians chapter 5, are you there? Look at this right here, verse 16. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. And look what Paul says now. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not what? 
fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, the, the flesh wants to retaliate. The flesh says, you did this to me, I'm going to do it to you. Or the flesh say, I'm going to get you before you get me. Now, most Bibles you see have a big capital S, a cap, capital S right? I don't know. If you got to change the James Bible, you're going to see a big old fat capital S. All right? Now, most people take that to mean the Holy Spirit. But that's not the Holy Spirit. Amen? To be honest with you, it should be a small case. S. Amen? Now, if it says Holy Spirit, well, then that's what, it's, that's what it actually means, the Holy Spirit. But if you see it, you know, I did a lot of theology teaching and studying whatever I found out where there's 66 errors 66 error in the whole 3,200 some words in the Bible but they're like 66 errors but here's the thing about the error it's an error if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you because he's a revealer he's the interpreter amen he's the ones that that would interpret stuff for you but I don't get into a whole lot of, of that, but when they say stuff is far off the wall, you know, I had to go check it out. But listen to this right here again now. It says, verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not do what? And walk in the spirit, and ye shall not what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the flesh wants to fight back. All right? But the Bible says, Paul tells in Romans 8 and Romans 8, you're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. You say, but I am in the flesh. No, the real you is not in the flesh. The real you is the spirit of you. Okay? Are you with me? Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So now, what? <laughs> you notice it? Capital S again? Yes. What contest can the flesh be against the Holy Spirit? None. This is why we know that ought to be a small S there. All right? A little small S. And it's all right to write in your Bible. Because it ain't nothing out here on this earth can be in competition with the Holy Spirit. That's the power of God. Amen? It says... For the flesh, verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh. And these are contrary, contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. So look what Paul's saying. He said, now I know you want to do right. You want to do this thing right. But you have, but, but you got the principalities of powers that you got to deal with. And in, in essence, he's saying, but I can tell you how you can get over Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't have that desire, that urge to retaliate. Well, I tell you about that old knucklehead. Let me tell you what he done. He come telling you what I done. Let me tell you what I saw him do. And what you saw may be just absolutely truth. But Paul says, also think on these things. Is it good? Is it pure? Huh? Does it have any virtue? You better shut your mouth up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm talking about that music. <laughs> Let me finish reading this. Okay. It said, um, I got three minutes. I believe I can do it. Verse 17. Uh, uh, verse, he says, they're contrary. Verse 17 said, they're contrary one to another. All right. But if ye be led of the spirit, your own spirit, ye are not under the law. He's talking about that recreated Spirit that's in you. The spirit that's created after the righteousness of Christ Jesus. All right. So he said, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now, pastor, how do I walk in the spirit? Can I show you right quick? All right. Now, these are words that Paul wrote inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right. And he's telling us to walk in what? The spirit. All right. Let me show you what that actually means. You probably know, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Go to John 6 and put verse 6 to 3 on the board. John 6, 63, and he's going to show you what verse 16 is telling you to do. All right? He's going to tell you exactly what that is. John 6, 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. 
The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit, life. So what is the spirit? What is the spirit? You just read it right there. The words I speak unto you, they are what? So he's telling us to walk in the what? Telling you to walk in the word. Telling you to walk in the word. Galatians says that if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how can I walk in the spirit? Jesus just said, the words I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. So if we walk in the word, we won't feel, fulfill the lust of the flesh. The, the flesh wants to fight back. The f- flesh wants to do you in. The flesh wants to talk about you, you b- because uh, I want you to talk about somebody else because that somebody else talked about you. That's flesh. That's the carnal nature. And all it knows how to do is to get back. Is to get back. So how do we walk in the spirit, Pastor? There it is right there. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit. So how are we going to walk? How are we going to stop the enemy from forcing us to do the things that we don't want to do? As Paul just said in chapter 5, we're going to walk in the spirit. What are we going to do? What did the word say? What, what, what was walking in the spirit is what? Walking in the word. And then we'll find out next week what it means when it says walk in the light. Okay, see, we we got to get educated if we in the word of God, if we're going to be successful. So you're not spending your time in Bible study for nothing. Amen. You're not. So now, even tonight, if you didn't know it, you know what you really know tonight. You really know tonight and see it according to scripture, how to walk in the spirit. If you're walking in the word, you're walking in the spirit because Jesus says his words were spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you got something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well.